For nearly a century, the Empire State Building has stood as an icon for New York City. Perhaps the city's greatest celebrity, it has cultivated an enviable filmography. Thousands of movies, commercials, comic books. It is the reference. It defines New York City. I like to think of ourselves as, as that we co-starred in the movie King Kong. You know, people would disagree, but I'm a little biased. It was built in 410 days amid a rapidly growing city and a country in a frenzy. And this was the tallest skyscraper in the world. It was, as they frequently said, the largest structure ever built by man. Its stats are stunning. 200,000 cubic feet of Indiana limestone and granite, 10 million bricks, and 730 tons of aluminum and stainless steel. The building is a maze, a collage of old and new. Restoration projects throughout the last two decades have produced an Empire State Building that looks old and acts young. Today, New York is building taller, but the Empire State Building's stature surpasses its height. From the wind tunnels at its base to the city's most high-profile light show, the building is an intricate ecosystem, and its identity is set in steel. Standing 102 stories tall, the Empire State Building was the world's tallest from 1931 to the 1970s when the Twin Towers took the title. To its highest floor, the building measures a staggering 1,250 feet. Count the spire and antenna, and it extends 1,454 feet into the midtown Manhattan sky. The building began to take shape in the late 1920s, the throes of the Jazz Age. It was a time of excess and economic prosperity. The ambition to build the Empire State Building was really the idea of a group of businessmen. They got as the head of their organization Al Smith, who had been Governor Al Smith of New York, and he had run for the presidency and, and lost, so he needed a job. He was the president of the Empire State Building Corporation. Construction moved at a record-breaking pace. At a rate of four and a half stories per week, the process took a year and 45 days to complete. Compare that to the three years it took to build the Chrysler Building. We're standing on the north side of 34th Street um, at the corner of Fifth Avenue, very busy intersection. Um, and it was a place where people would gather during the construction of the building. There's actually a famous photo from, from up in the construction of the crowds gathered here along, along the sidewalk. Um, it was quite a spectacular event, and it was actually something of a spectator sport. Men were not wearing hard hats, they were not tethered, so the, the steel workers would be walking on the beams, and you could watch them, you know, freestyling along the construction site as it happened, and that was something that people found very, very exciting. The steel worker, the iron worker who built the building, sort of became this figurehead for American, American ability. And they became these kind of symbols of the sort of daring, brash, can-do American spirit. We're on the 86th floor of the Empire State Building. The top of this structure is the highest thing in the world today. When the Empire State Building opened on May 1st, 1931, the United States was in the midst of the Great Depression. The Roaring Twenties had given way to a stock market crash and economic devastation. Famously, the Empire State Building remained empty for, um, for more than a decade. It wasn't profitable until 1951, and it was called the Empty State Building through the Depression in the, in the 1930s. And so it took more than a decade uh, for the Empire State Building to find its tenants. The Empire State Building's signature spire and antenna, which is hit by lightning an average of 25 times a year, gave the building an unquestionable lead in a competition for height with the Chrysler Building. And along with the spire comes a story. Look at the scoop the Paramount cameraman caught. It looks like a scene from 1992. One thing the building was not used for, a parking spot for blimps. Counterfeited photographs show it happening, and a real video shows one feigned attempt. 
The public was made to believe wealthy businessmen from Germany could travel in blimps across the Atlantic, dock in the middle of the city by attaching the blimp to the mast, and descend from their Zeppelin onto a platform that would take them groundward. So it wasn't a practicable idea. It never happened. There was a kind of stunt to pass off some mail from a blimp to the top of the mooring mast. But the designers knew that this is not a key function. But it became a part of the story and of the legend. The building inhabits a space where past and present coexist, suspended between history and modernization. The icon, so distinctly New York, is both historically reverent and technologically advanced. The Empire State Realty Trust started a major modernization project in 2010 with the goal of maximizing energy efficiency while preserving, in some cases restoring, the building's character. We've retrofitted all 6,514 windows and we quadrupled their performance and reused over 96% of the materials. We retrofitted the entire chiller plant, so all of the cooling in this building comes from the chiller plant, and we gutted the machines, so the same way we reused windows, we reused the chiller materials, right, the giant metal shells, and we recycled all of the copper and metal that were inside and rebuilt the guts to be as efficient as possible by modern standards. The activity starts 55 feet below ground, where wind tunnels bring fresh air up to the lower floors of the building. Built in 1930, the building had no air conditioning system. The wind tunnels were necessary to cool the building, and they still work. Inside our wind tunnels and were water tables, where water collects from what's settling inside the building. That was designed to actually bring fresh air up to the lower floors that are underground, like where we are right now in the lower level, 35 feet underground. There's also a story of how a river ran underneath the Empire State Building, and it is down there somewhere and eventually goes out to the Hudson. Above a lobby used by tourists and tenants and a second floor museum are 77 floors of office space. Separate elevator banks take tourists up to an outdoor observatory on the 86th floor and a recently revamped indoor observatory on the 102nd. Welcome to the heart of New York City, our open air, 360 degree views on this glorious spring day. My gosh, we couldn't have programmed this better. Fantastic. So we have this. You can't really beat this. Unobstructed 360 views in every direction. Outside deck, we hear New York and the vibrancy of New York. For so many, the Empire State Building means more than just scenic views. Ah, Lebanese, uh, born in Mexico City, grew up in West Africa, came to the United States August 14th, 1980 as a first generation immigrant. For me, I'll never forget the very first time I visited the building was in August of 2001, when I had family from Lebanon visiting. And of course, this was on our bucket list, a must visit. And all I have these fond memories of family members that are no longer with me today, but that moment is incredible. To really take in New York City, to feel, to hear, to see New York City from above, in the heart of New York City, is no comparison. This was a life event for my family to be at the Empire State Building on top of the world right here in the heart of New York City. That was the event in itself. And this is what the power of this aspirational brand is. It's just, it is an event in itself just to be here. That's aspirational brand component of, I did it. We made it to New York City. Some of the building's magic is in its history. The rest is in the lights. For decades, the top of the Empire State Building is shown for the city at night. Today, lights in various hues pay homage to various causes, occasions, and organizations. The system in use today consists entirely of LEDs. 
from a technology perspective, it was amazing to see the transformation of the helium lights that we used to have on the setbacks. Was, you know, we're using these huge gels to change the colors of the building. And it took four electricians almost the entire day to prep for the colors in that evening. To today's new lights, we our LED lights, that have over 16 million color combinations that we can create and all the way from, you know, a couple levels down and all the way to the very tip of the antenna. The lighting program includes the acknowledgement of various holidays, religious and secular, but leaves space for requests. We're not gonna reveal who gets to the side, but I can say it's a committee that reviews all the applications. So we have an online process. There's zero fee associated with any lighting event. There's certain requirements, and then the team vets every single request approves, recommends approval, not approval, and we, we decide and move forward. But it's a secret. In a city always moving and forever changing, the lights of the Empire State Building remain a constant. For even the most jaded New Yorkers, harried and haggard from stress-infused commutes, long days and longer nights, there is alchemy in a glance at the Empire State Building against the night sky. Historic and modern, old and new, it stands as the embodiment of dichotomy. At the end of the day, as the lights switch on, it casts its spell for all to see.